The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. And this Holy Sunday marks the first Sunday in the new year. And I've heard and read much about how grateful we're all going to be to bid goodbye to 2020 and hello to 2021. And so let us hope, let us hope that it may be a happy new year, that we will find some health, and healing, and wholeness. Dare we hope for a measure of peace and racial reconciliation? Let us take, take our parts. Let us do what we can to make it a good year. Thank you for journey, journeying with us through the season of Advent, through Christmas Eve, both broadcast and here in person in the parking lot. Thank you for joining us once again for worship on the second Sunday of Christmas. I do want to take a bit of uh, time, just a bit of time, to say what a wonderful staff we have here at First Presbyterian and how so very grateful I am to work with them, to be a part of this team. We have uh, Rachel, our children's music uh, director, who has been recording us, who has been taping beautiful picture shots and putting it all together for so many, many months. Grateful to Amy, our director of family ministries, who has gotten readers and has put out so much material on our website and Facebook uh, to keep us uh, going in ministry and keep us going in some sort of fellowship. I'm so grateful to Eric Gastire, our organist and choir director. I have to say he spent practically a whole day putting together uh, the broadcast service that we did for those who gathered with us on Christmas Eve in the parking lot. And of course, we are all grateful each and every Sunday for his wonderful music making. The staff includes our office staff, Donna Bai and Donna Rulon, who keep us chugging away and keep our members informed in all sorts of ways. And our custodial staff of Brian and Shannon. And last but not least, our building supervisor, uh, Tim Hall, who has kept the roof over our heads, the walls upright, the equipment functioning as it needs to. So to all of the staff at First Presbyterian Church, let me say thank you very, very much. And now, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. For the second and final Sunday of Christmas Tide, we have our final batch of Christmas music for the season. First of all, for the prelude, if you thought that a musical mashup was a modern invention, you might be surprised to learn that it dates at least back to the 19th century. The prelude is actually a mashup of uh, Bach's Pastoral in F, and the hymn uh, I grew up knowing as O Thou Joyful, O Thou Wonderful, Grace Redeeming Christmas Tide or O du Frohliche in German. This uh, setting is by Gustav Rebling, um, a largely forgotten German composer of the 19th century who was famous in his day for his work with choirs and as a conductor. Our musical offering today marks the return of our doctors of science who are also wonderful pianists, uh, James West and Claudia Thompson, playing uh, a setting of, of Adeste Fideles by the American composer Norman Delajoyo. And finally, the postlude. I've mentioned a number of French carols over the last six weeks. This is one of the newer ones at only about 150 years old. Il est né la divine enfant, or the English text for us, he is born the divine Christ child. This setting, which is really a pedal etude, uh, is by American Richard Hudson, who taught for many years at UCLA. Finally today, I'd like to send my condolences to the family of Carl Zimmerman, 
who we lost this, uh, this past month. Carl was a longtime member of the Westminster Presbyterian Church Choir and then our own choir here at First Pres. I first met Carl in 1992 and it's been a pleasure to know him and to work with him. I offer my sincere condolences to Marlene, Susan, Barry, and all of their family. Thank you. I invite you to join me in our call to worship. Let us sing with gladness, for the love of God has come to dwell on earth. Let us, Let us shout, shout with, with joy, for, for the, the grace, grace of, of God, God is at work in, in our lives. Let us praise God, the giver of all blessings, for the very heart of God is given to us. Let us, Let us call, call out to God. God for redemption, For redemption is, is God's, God's gift, gift to us. us. Come, Come, let us, let us worship, worship our God. God. Let us pray. May we always be open to your love, O God, a love shaped by justice, a love grounded in life, a love that transforms, a love that speaks out, a love that is revealed in the life of Jesus. May we always be open to your love, O God, that our love also may be revealed in our living. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me our prayer of confession. 
God, God of blessing, blessing you, you have come, come to us again this holy season, but we lose interest quickly, and our thoughts are turned to our own problems. We languish looking for easy answers, distracted by the false promises of the loud voices around us. We do not listen for your voice, calling us home from our wanderings. Call us still, O God. Gather us from our far places. Show us your mercy and remind us that in you we have life abundant. Gracious God, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. The gifts of the star child are healing of heart, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, the abiding presence of the spirit in suffering and joy, and the power to live life anew. Friends, know that we are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Please turn to others around you and offer a gesture of peace. The peace of Christ be with you and, and also, also with you. Happy New Year! Boy, there is nobody on this planet more excited to see 2020 end more than the entire human race. 2020 was not kind. We saw many, many challenges, and some will continue into the new year and longer. But one thing that has been consistent is God's grace. Through all of the challenges, through the racial divide that we're feeling, through the coronavirus that we're feeling, through the political unrest that we're feeling, there were moments that God's grace was shown. And so I'm going to challenge you to think back on 2020. I know we want to wipe it from our memories, but I want you to think back on 2020 and think about some of the ways that God's grace was shown to you. Maybe it was the day that you got to do your school from home and you got to stay in your pajamas and you got to help mom make some cookies. Maybe it was helping a friend understand the differences between people. Maybe it was being able to have a conversation with somebody that just was different than yours, but learning from them. Maybe it was from helping a sick friend that got the coronavirus. There's all kinds of way that God, ways that God has shown us his grace. And sometimes we can see his grace, like this spool of, of um, yarn, ribbon, we know it's there, but his grace, God's grace is unending. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And we never, ever have to worry about his grace ending. So as we are in 2021 and the new year and we make some new promises and we hope for better days in 2021, I hope that we can look back on 2020 and see all of the great things that God has done for us. So my prayer for you in the year 2020 is one that I found and it says, let's pray. May God's love, may God's light and God's spirit manifest in all your life. The motives and desires of your heart, the choices you make and the steps you take. Amen. In the middle of the Advent season through which we have just come uh, this, this, this last December, the Old Testament lesson was from the chapter, chapter 61 of the book of Isaiah. And as it happens, this Sunday, the Old Testament lesson is also uh, some more verses from Isaiah 61. 
And I just wanted to name that and to read a few of these verses as a background to today's gospel text from the gospel according to Luke. So from Isaiah chapter 61 going into chapter 62, we hear words of great, great promise and hope and transformation coming out of a period of terrible exile. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so with that ringing in our ears, let us turn to the gospel according to Luke. I'll be reading from verse 22. Uh, This is chapter 2, excuse me. Luke chapter 2, I'll be reading from verse 22 through verse 38. When the time came for Mary's purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice, according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of the people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed." And a sword will pierce your own soul also. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. Anna never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and prayer day and night. At that moment, she came and began to praise God, to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. Though this has been a Christmas season like no other, I hope some sense of Christmas joy is still lingering with you. I hope between Christmas Eve and Christmas evening, either in person or through FaceTime or Zoom, 
you experienced some hint of wonder, some moments of laughter, some warm conversation, some anticipation and fulfillment, and some sense of longing in this time of diminished family gathering. After the rush and preparation and the excitement, it seems appropriate to sit back and reflect for a while, to let it all soak in. This is a good time to be reflective because we come this Sunday to the beginning of a new year. Before us stretches a new yet unknown future, especially as we wait to move beyond the ravages of a year-long pandemic, a surge of job loss, homelessness, and financial uncertainty, and a reckoning with nationally entrenched systemic racism. Yet in the face of these times of trial, this community of faith gives testimony to our trust that within the ongoing cycle of years, God remains Emmanuel. God with us. But God does not stay put. God with us is always on the move. This season, we have followed God's movements from Isaiah through John the Baptizer to Mary. We have tiptoed into the stable and peered once more into the manger to wonder what is lying there? And what have we seen? Just a thread of promise and prophecy and a glimpse of a baby in swaddling clothes. And then the God we thought we had cornered is off again, being born and glimpsed in countless other times and places. If this experience of faith seems as hard to hold on to as the God who authors it, then we are in good company. Today, Simeon and Anna step out of the shadows to tell their stories, to sing their songs, Simeon and Anna, two ancient aging pilgrims who believed they had heard God's promise and then held it in their arms one random day in the Jerusalem temple. But what had they seen? What had they held? Simeon stood there with the bewildered Mary's child in his arms, praising God for Messiah. But what could he see other than a frail newborn turning its head instinctively toward its mother's breast? Such is Emmanuel. Such is God with us? The world still looked the same. Herod sat on his throne. Caesar ruled the land. Disease and, de and death claimed their victims. Violence was always at hand. Simeon and Anna would be long dead by the time Jesus would begin his work in ministry so too would be many of those who had peopled the manger scene that holy night, shepherds and magi and wandering townsfolk. Holding the child in his arms, Simeon could not know what would become of him. Simeon 
could only know what he had heard and felt. The old, old stories, the ancient promises, the sense that God was not done, the occasional grip of conviction or the warm feeling of blessed assurance. What Simeon held in the temple that day was little more or less than what we hold today, a promise and a hope. One might say we have a little more, that we have heard the end of the story, that we know how it all turns out. That is indeed what we celebrate when we share the communion meal, when we give of our time and our resources, when we gather for worship and prayer and study, when we try to live our lives according to the pattern of the Galilean rabbi, we hold precious experiences of personal faith, those mysterious moments when we have sensed God's presence. Like Simeon, we have held in our hearts that tiny baby of promise and hope. We have gl glimpsed God's salvation prepare, prepared in the presence of all the peoples. But is that enough? Simeon and Anna died with Roman oppression still in the streets. Today, God's world is groaning for deliverance. Many of us have felt, even as Mary did, a sword pierce our hearts. We live so much of life between realized expectation and unfulfilled longing. Yet, the promise of Christmas is that in the midst of the stuff of our lives, we are invited to hold the child of hope. As this year passed, passes into the year to come, we are invited to remember the spirit of Simeon, to remember that, as John Stendhal says, we have moments or the memory of moments when the tender compassion of our God has come close enough to see and feel. It may not seem like much to go on, but Simeon and Anna are here to tell us that it is enough for now. Soon we will break bread together and share the cup. We will taste a remembrance of things we do not really understand about a God who is elusively present and presently elusive, a God who is with us and a God who is with the whole world. We have precious few certainties, but a wondrously varied collection of stories and promises and hopes. With Simeon and Anna and Isaiah's people in exile, we are waiting for redemption. Meanwhile, a new year beckons. Who knows what it will bring? We can only trust that Emmanuel, God with us, is already there. With that promise and that good hope, 
May we go into this new year, 2021, in peace. Amen. We gather again today together around a table that has been set for us, the holy table of our Lord. And today we do this gathering and this partaking of the elements on the first Sunday of a new year. Know that you are invited to this table you are invited to partake. And partaking together, my hope is that we are strengthened, strengthened in our faith, strengthened in our connection to one another and to God's Spirit. We don't know what this year will bring, but we know we always can return to a table that has been blessed, to eat bread broken and cup poured out. You are welcome here. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God who is gracious. And let us pray. You have entered this place, O God, and in your holy shadow, heaven tangles with earth in the bread and the cup and the promise of hope. As you once came to us in a stable in Bethlehem, come now and be with us in the bread of Christ in this world that hungers and waits for peace. As once your Spirit poured forth life upon the earth, come now and pour the cup of Christ for this creation, waiting for renewal. Be present in our hope in this holy time, in the silence of power and the power of silence, in the throne rooms of the rich and the shanties of the poor, in overfed communities and underfed souls, gather up hope in the bread and the cup. Break open the good news of your incarnation on parched farmlands and frightened cities, in the hearts of the proud and the longings of the lowly. Gather up the good news in the bread and the cup. 
where once we tasted the bread of tears, nourish us now with the abundance of your love, made real in a small child, born long ago and far away, yet real and living now in our midst. For this, humanity is waiting, waiting for life. Hear us now as we join our voices, praying the ancient prayer we have been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We remember that on the night of his arrest, Gathered with friends and disciples in an upper room, Jesus took bread. And after he gave thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in me, poured out for you. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim in our actions God's saving, redeeming, whole-making grace to the end of time. At this time, I invite you to pass the bread around your circle and to take the cup. And to join me as we commune together. This is the cup of healing and wholeness, and the bread of hope. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for you have visited your people. In human frailty, you have revealed the hope of the world. Gather us and all people into your arms so that in your embrace we might share your peace and goodwill, which is the inheritance of your children everywhere. Amen. We have come to the beginning of a new year, and we really have no earthly idea what the new year will bring. Following Simeon and Anna's example, may we speak of promise, may we look for hope. May we maintain our fellowship together in all the ways we can while still quarantining, distancing, masking. May we, insofar as we are able, 
reach out to others. And especially when a vaccine has circulated throughout our population, may we physically renew the bonds of fellowship and love that make us a church family. Is this too much? Is it too much to ask? Our faith tells us no. The promise continues. Hope remains. 2020 has no power to change that. Let us walk together into the future that God has prepared and into which God's Spirit is inviting us. As you leave worship this day, go knowing that you are embraced in the steadfast love of God forever, that you are redeemed in the grace of Jesus Christ now and always, that together we are being empowered for faithful witness and loving service by Holy Spirit. And so, may the Advent hopes and promises of hope, peace, joy, and love wash over and around you this and every day. Amen.